again. We will begin uh, the second session. Our second session mainly um, focuses on sensing the pedestrians. Uh, so far, uh, it was all about modeling the behaviors of the vehicle and the pedestrian. And this time we will focus on sensing the pedestrian. Um, and the first speaker is uh, Professor Chi Chi Chen. Uh, Professor Chi Chi Chen is an expert on radar and sensing, and he's with the Electroscience Laboratory. I, I welcome Professor Chen, and let's have a virtual applause. Um, I guess we can. Thank you. Here. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Let me try to share my screen and start my presentation. Okay, can you guys see my slide? Yes. Okay. Okay, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for also inviting me to give these uh, short presentations. And first I would like to apologize in the original announcement. I know the title is uh, Development of Pedestrian and Bicycle List Circuits. But because the time is really short, 30 minutes, so uh, will be, and besides this workshop really is about pedestrian only. So I did today's talk, uh, I will be just covering on the pedestrian part. And so this will be the outline of today's uh, talk. I will not necessarily go through by this order, but this is what we'll be covering. And first we'll be covering the concept operation and what that's related to how you design the circuit and to be. And then the second one, just very briefly uh, talk about the Europe test protocol for the pedestrian uh, to test the effectiveness of the auto automatic emergency braking system or known as AEB system. So we just briefly uh, let you know and that kind of set the stage of how do you design a circuit so that to, to be like a real human and also to pass the, those uh, test protocol. And then we'll also look at the, from theoretical aspect, uh, look at the, what is the scaling property of pedestrians in the 76 to uh, 82 gigahertz millimeter wave bands. And we'll be looking at the, this property in both theoretical from numerical modeling uh, perspective and also from the measurement uh, result perspective. Then I would just, you know, talk about some of the pedestrian mannequin designs and that's been used for, for conducting the testing of the AEB systems. Okay, so before we start, uh, you know, people may think this is, oh, since this is a millimeter radar, so what's the big deal? Uh, this should be like any other radar which have been used for decades for detecting the airborne aircraft, detecting everything else. But I like to use this slide to, to kind of point out this nothing but uh, because we're dealing with the wavelengths only about 3.9 millimeters. And in the traditional radar operation, which you detect the aircraft far away or anything, we are operating in so-called a far field condition, which is assuming your illumination field, the amplitude and phase across a target because distance so far, so that your M2 is uniform, your face is uniform, there's no change. Now, if we look at that, what is the far field? What's, how far is a nerve to be called far field? How far is a nerve such that your illumination over the target, such as pedestrian in our case here, uh, is uniform. And so if we look at the 77 gigahertz, in order to reach that far field criteria, you would, for, for this type of target, like one meter by one meter size, and you would take about 530 meters to reach that criteria. And if your target is only half meter by half meter, you take about 128 meters. Now, as you all know where for the AEB system, that's now where the, all the actions are, right? You saw the previous presentations. Most of the actions uh, occurs within 50 meters or even less than that like 10 meters. So what we're dealing with is a radar detection problem, which 
is more complicated than traditional radar because you are so target so close and target so big uh, across the height and in terms of wavelengths, your the amplitude and phase across target is not uniform. So this we call the near zone. So hopefully I use this set of sin. This is nothing like a simple uh, traditional radar. So what it means is your 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 target property is changed with distance and change with your antenna beam. So here's one of the video uh, which during the testing you get you, you can see this is a surrogate uh, we develop uh, jointly with the IUPL, which is Indiana University, Purdue University in Indiana, Indianapolis. Uh, this is one of the test setup, and this is to the downrange. So the position will be walking along uh, the road and the car kind of trading behind it, which could be on road side, but in this case, right in the center. And this is gantry system, but there are other testing uh, would be, you can use also the slay system pulled by the cables. And I will start a video. Now for those who would be downloading the archive of this presentation, Unfortunately, you won't see the video, you only see the PDF file, so there's no animation. So you will see what's happening. And this particular mannequin is actually articulated, which means the arm and the, the legs, they will move like a real human. So here's the video, hopefully you guys can see that. And then you can see that's where the A, B kick in. So the this is very close, right? And so we need to make a pedestrian mannequin, which can produce a radar response to a vehicle approaching from behind, in this case, uh, which is similar to a real pedestrian, not only in terms of the look angle, also a different distance. They all had to be behave like real human. In this case, also as a motion, behave like human. Now, this is what's happening. If we look at Let's say for the previous, you conduct a measurement, you say, I call it a radar cross section, which is a normalized quantity. So what it, it's not, a, so not supposed to be range dependent. This is in the traditional radar sense. So what we're looking at is, this is the uh, major set, this done by European NCAP uh, data set. You can see this is a whole bunch of measurements of a, a pedestrian using real automobile radar. After the calibration, and this is the, the so-called radar cross-section in dBSM as function of distance. Zero means it's right there at the manic, at a, a pedestrian. And this is real human me pedestrian measure data. And there's an upper bound, lower bound, which kind of, when you're very far away, you can see the value approach constant value, which is what I was trying to say at the large distance when it's all uniform. And it's supposed to be, because this normalized quantity is supposed to be constant, for pedestrian would be between five to minus five case. But in this data, you can see when we are within the 30 meter range, that RCS, which normalized range already normalized out, is still decreased with distance. So this make it more complicated, more challenging to design your, your, your mannequin or surrogate uh, to be able to produce a similar trend in terms of down range. So this is one aspect, right? Uh, that, so had to be functional distance, look like a real human. And then also another test scenario, which is the most common one, uh, is the crossing track. So you can see in this case, a pedestrian will, will cross the, the road and then there will be approach vehicle. And this is what's gonna happen, right? So the vehicle is approaching. So the view angle, the look angle from the vehicle radar to the pedestrian is changing. Right, and also the distance is changing. And so in this case, it's a cross range. So the mannequin need also to produce the similar response when your vehicle is looking from the side, from the angle, right? Now, I, I know this is probably very theoretical uh, for most of you, I try my best to simplify it. So what we are looking at is this so-called near field effect. And I have a one meter by one meter metal plate here. If this is metal plate, and if I have radar wave, seven, seven gigahertz, basically shine on this metal plate from 200 meters away. And, and then in this case, you'll see I have certain beam width assumption. At far away, you can see this is the M2 and this is the kind of phase across that one meter by one meter 
uh, play is pretty uniform. So it gives you a very high response, very strong response, because every part of that play is reflected to the radar. But now if the distance get closer, closer, you can see, now you start to see the ring. What this ring is, the red color could be 100 degree, the blue is minus 100 degree. So now you begin to see the phase changing dramatically. So what happened every time you had reflection from the, the red band, which is what plus phase, positive phase, and then the blue band, those two actually tend to cancel each other. So when you are in a close range, what happened is your reflection actually just coming from this center region effectively. So once you get closer and closer, it gets worse and worse. This is the reason why the radar cross-section of a target for the 77 gigahertz, when you're so close, it actually decrease with distance. Okay, just because cancellation. So nothing changed, radar is the same, target size is the same, but you get closer then because the angle is changing now. View angle is widening. And when angle change, you got this phase uh, variations. The other thing is, it also depends on your radar beam angle, right? Your antenna typically for pedestrian detection is very narrow beam in azimuth. So when you are in a cross range, they say for if it's car, which might be six feet across, and then your beam is narrow, then you are not illuminating. Uh, when you're close, you only illuminate partial of the object. The human could be just illuminating a leg below the waistline. If the radar is mounted low, if the radar mounted high, like a pickup truck, you might be looking at torso when you're very close within 10 meters. So the problem is you are not illuminating a whole people, whole person from head to toe. So basically your response is gonna change. And this kind of demonstrate well, when I have a different beam width, this is a half power beam width, the narrow, they all look different responses, right? And that is another challenging. When you try to design a circuit, you cannot say, okay, might just make a torso look like a human the, the torso part produces some reflectivity, then it's good enough. No, you need to make the head look like a human. You need to make the, the waist, you need to make the leg look like human. So I just want to, you know, cover all these bases in terms of theory to look at what does it take to make a circuit which can be as close to as a real human as possible, which walking on the street, regardless what where you mount the the, the the radar, what angle you're from the radar to look at a human, what distance, all these factors. So, you know, it's not a very trivial method. This is kind of a, a measurement demonstration about a beam. I'm looking at the bicycle is from behind and, and then you can see the two curve there, blue curve and red curve. They are supposed to be the same. These are calibrated RCS, but they are not just because when you have narrow beam, you are enumerating smaller part, especially your clothes. When right here, you have more differences. The larger area illuminate, get larger response, makes sense. But the farther away, they converge. When you're far away, even the A degree pin is still illuminate the whole object, which in this case, bicycle is. That's why they converge here. But in close range, they're not. So even in the bicycle is case, uh, it's the same as the pedestrian case. When you're close, like I, that's what I'm saying, you need to make pedestrian everywhere on the body react reflect like a real human. So then you'll be independent of your, 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 your radar pinot configurations. Okay, so we'll quickly look at the uh, the test protocol. I'm not going to detail this all published document. You guys can can find it. So the, this is basically uh, the, the NCAP, Europe NCAP for the pedestrian test protocol. What it says is basically, let's start with certain distance. If we could be moving at constant speed without breaking, and this pedestrian will be moving and from certain distance out to across the across track. And most of the Euro European test circuit will not have articulation. They just on the slide, pulling over, leg and, leg and arm are, are all fixed in position. But they will be moving at constant speed, car moving constant speed. And it defined two impact point. One is the, like a 25%. If you measure the whole width of car, zero from one end, there'll be 25%. That's where impact going to be. When car arrive here, pedestrian will arrive at that point. And then if you move a little bit slower, there will be a second impact point and you'll be hitting the, the test pedestrian circuit when it's on a 75%. So that's 0%, 25%, 75%. And this kind of the, for different test protocol, uh, you have different speed, 
profile. And what happened is basically the, in this European test, the look angle is always the same. You pick a profile, you say, okay, I'm going to do a 20 kilometer speed test. Basic range will be from 20 to 60 kilometer per hour and with every five kilometer increment. But you pick one speed to do the testing and then within that speed, pedestrian moving at constant speed, eight kilometer per hour. So when you have higher speed, you start larger distance, maximize like 35, maximum 40, maximum 35 in this case. So if high speed, you'll start larger distances. And once you start the angle, right, the vehicle will be moving constant speed, the circuit will be moving constant speed, so the angle becomes fixed. But when your largest higher speed, the angle will be lower angle because now you start as far distance away. So this just, you know, give you, give you, this is kind of even the easier test because the look angle from the radar to the circuit maintain the same, right? And, but different speed have three different look angles. This is not even all, you don't have to look all around the, the circuit in, in this test case, but it's assuming you should, the circuit should react like a human all the way around. So these are the, some of the two, two standards I, I'm aware of. Uh, surrogate, I won't call it standard though, but the NCAP one, this is pretty standard. Uh, European community use this a lot, uh, produced by 4A. And this is a surrogate which is supposed to produce the same radar response in millimeter wave, 77 gigahertz uh, band uh, as a real human. They have a dog, their child. And also independently from the US under the Toyota Collaborative Receptive Research Center, uh, we also develop the our own version of circuit, right? The human circuit. Now, these two they may look alike, but the design philosophy is very different. This design is by strategically placing some ref reflectors within the body. So the fabric itself is not reflective, you know, not a main reflector. So if by placing some reflector inside carefully to mimicking the human, and this also not articulated. And, but it will serve the purpose for testing for this NCAP because it's fixed view angle, some well defined cases. But if you want to go around to do a more gen general case, then that would probably not produce the same as human. Now this approach, the way it's defined, design is really, it, the whole circuit is wrapped by a skin. We call it artificial skin and there's a pattern number you can look into the detail about what that skin is. So it's basically just a fabric. So as long as you have a, a molding, let's say a human shape molding, you pick a standard of body size, you wrap this with that artificial skin, then you reflect like, you, you reflect like a real human reflect, regardless where you're looking, this leg part, torso part or hair part. And that will not be the case here. And also this is regardless where you're looking around different angle. Now, most interestingly, you can take this mannequin circuit Put on the bicycle, then become bicycle circuit. So it becomes is the real, it's just one same circuit for pedestrian and bicyclists. But for this case, it's different. For the bicycle circuit, you will be doing a separate, different design for that approach. So I just want to let let you guys be aware of these two different design philosophy. And as I mentioned, this also is articulated. Uh, you can certainly, if you don't want to articulate, you don't have to move it. But you can articulate walking just like a video demonstrate. So some of the scaling property, as I say, we look at it, the how the pedestrian producer scaling to the radar response in, in different, in both numerical modeling, theoretical point of view, and also in the experiment. So in the numerical model, we usually, basically, this is what people use in movie industry, pose are to create different posture. You can age it, you can make it change in the BMI factor, you can change in posture. So we use this, uh, animation tool to produce the shape. And then we can use, import that into the new electromagnetic simulation tool to produce the similarity radar response of human. And because the weapon is so small, this actually requires lots of computational resources. You can see just the face alone. This, there's a tiny, tiny uh, meshes uh, required to get the accuracy. And for example, a, a potassium, we use like five gigabytes just to store the mesh alone, not to mention about the computation. But anyway, that's what, what you, we use. And using that tool, uh, then you can 
produce lots of different signatures of, of a pedestrian. For example, this is standing, and you look at different azimuth angle, and you can characterize statistically uh, where what's the pattern look like. This is kind of with a very fine look angle variation, and this is like a five degree running window. And then you can have running, you can have kids, you even, as I say, you can do the make change PI, PMI, make like a piece. Uh, but this kind of point out an interesting problem when you do a real radar because the 77 gigahertz, if your angle changes slightly, let's say 0.5 degree, your response could drop 10 dB. And that just because of the nature of this human body size compared to whether it's so small. So when you do a radar detection, if you just base on the, the instantaneous M2 to say how oh, this is human, at some point, you might be seeing this value, and some point, you might be seeing this value. So it'll be very difficult. So that's something you have to keep in mind when you try to detect human. So now we say, well, how accurate is this numerical model? As I said, this is a, the reason why we do that is because it's very difficult to do the human measurement because wavelength is only 3.9 millimeter. If this human, when you stand there, tire moving a little bit, the whole data will change. So there's lots of uncertainty in, involved with measurement. That's why we use the numerical model to produce more theoretical uh, result of characterize what a pedestrian should look like. But we had to validate. The way we validate is we actually conduct a measurement and this is just a you know a simple measurement setup. We up, up, up convert to 77 gigahertz and then you have a pedestrian here standing on a rotating table which will be rotating. And so we can collect the scale as functional frequencies. So after collect data, this is one of the case to, to, to demonstrate the simulation tool is actually pretty accurate. Uh, you're comparing the two data. One is the, the red curve, that's the actual major data of a pedestrian subject and, and standing still, but it's rotating different look angle. We look at just half of that. And then compare with the simulation, which is was the model was built based on a measurement, physical measurement of this subject. And then you can see it's very similar. This is the five degree mean pattern. Okay, and in, this is like a very much finer angle in, increment. And then another advantage of looking in the numerical model, I can look at different part. I can look at the head, torso, the leg, the hand to look at which part is most important. So when you design a circuit, do I need to make everybody look, every part of human body part like a radar or I just need the main part and that's, What's the advantage you can do that? Certainly with a real human, you cannot do that. And so basically what it says is the torso and two legs are the main response, right? You can look at the, the torso gets strong response of all angles and the leg also has strong response, but it's more uh, because there are two of them. That's why they're more interference back, back and forth. And this is how we, we have a few subject, we do the measurement and it's kind of compared with the TACI circuit I, I mentioned earlier, uh, the major data is in blue as functional angle. And we compare that scaling pattern, RCS, with the major data average value of upon all these different BMI, different subject. And then you can see it pretty close, right? And so overall a human, if you stand in steel, you look like olive shape, like the elliptical shape of scaling pattern front and back because of the flat, also, it gives you stronger response from side cross section is smaller, so it becomes weaker. Now, what if I am walking? When walking, you can see the torso will rotate a little bit. Then you'll see in the major data out of five up su subject, you can see that maximum response also rotate. So that ellipse, I call a scaling ellipse of the human also rotate just because of torso. Now we also look at the close effect, closing effect, right? And really not much effect. You can look at the summer, blue curve and which is minima, just t-shirt short like that. And then spring with some jacket and then winter heavy coat. And, and the effect of heavy winter coat really just kind of smooth out, kind of spreading out a little more uniform, but overall statistically, those closing really has not much effect uh, to the skin unless you're wearing the heavy leather or the wet clothes. We can also look at the, the child uh, which is certainly much weaker response and between the simulation and measurement. And we look at obese. What's interesting in obese is unlike the, 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 the low BMI uh, human, basically your body shape become more rounded. 
when you run it, basically you look at radar response and before you kind of more of stronger in the front and stronger front back and then side is weaker. But if you look at the obese, basically stronger actually from the oblique angle, just because uh, it kind of, you have more flat surface when you look at side angle there and that's produce the angle, uh, stronger response when you look at the road. Another feature is the motion. Now, in the previous talk, you say, okay, people walking out of vehicle, jump out of vehicle, park vehicle, can we detect them, right, and ahead of time? Now, motion is a very important signature for the pedestrian because uh, you can run, you can walk, but your hand, leg, all are moving around. So from radar point of view, they produce so-called, you can see the velocity of double chain. This is the, just the motion data. This is not radar, motion data of arm and different parts. And this capture uh, in the OSU has a, a lab, motion capture lab, we capture all these uh, published data there. And if you can take that motion data and then you can do the electromagnetic model, this is what we predict, what is the frequency will vary up and down. The mean curve is where your body is moving, that's Doppler. And if you are moving across in, uh, approaching radar it will be positive speed, and if you're away with negative speed. And then you can see the leg and arm because with respect to the body, leg could be swing forward or backward. So backward will be back, back. And then you saw the leg. So there's very rich signature there you can see, right? And this is simulate. And then we, you can look at the measurement here. This is the measurement of pedestrian and approaching. And then you can see, if you look at rad radar gram, we call it radar gram as function of time. And then you can see, if I'm approaching, you can see the whole body moving, average kind of crossing speed, getting closer. That's your walking speed of the uh, body. And then, but the most important, you can actually see the arm, the legs individually. So on the road, especially you say in the very congested area, you got the mailbox, trash camp, park vehicles, lamp poles. This will be pretty much your best way to separate a human, a pedestrian walking in the street from all other junk, which might give you much stronger response. But this signature, all other will be is stationary. We only be respect your vehicle moving speed will be right there, constant. But you will have all this signature. You can, there's no question you can identify that's, that's a walking human. The dog will be walking different speed. Cat will be walking different speed, right? So this has been not, you know, been normalized in the testing, unfortunately, in at Euro NK. They are studying developing. I have been serving on the test force, SAE test force, rec making rec recommendation of what to test. So they are not just starting considering including the articulation, the Doppler in the surrogate design, but the current one is not, uh, not articulate, but we are kind of ahead of game. We are doing the articulate one. But in this case, is crossing. So makes your double shift is maximum. How about crossing, right? Remember the two minutes left. Uh, that's okay. fine. This is my last slide. So you can see in this case, a vehicle, let's say I got radar approaching down, you know, driving down the street, you got guy crossing. Can I see the doubler? Well, unfortunately, in this case, it's hard to see just because even your hands are moving. Leg are moving, but in terms of it didn't move in the down range. As long as there's no distance change, but respect to the, a particular refraction point through the radar, you would not have a realist, relative speed change, right? So in this case, this the major data shows, here's my speed. They're a little bit spreading in the spectrum. It's not totally uh, zero speed, but you will see the spreading but it's not easy. If you look carefully, you might be able to decipher the arm and leg. So it'd be more challenging, even for like a previous talk case, you, a person walk out of a parked car and you only, be, you only start to see them when you are much closer and then you have angle. Once you have angle, the arm, leg swing, you can see more variations, but that would be some of the feature. So this will be my last slide. And I, I, as I say, my original talk of the whole thing is like four hours. I can cut in this very short and hopefully get you get your taste of what does what does it involve to de design a pedestrian circuit. So it you actually you can trust that to test your A B system.
Okay, so that will be my talk. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Professor Chen. Uh, we can have one short question. Okay. Uh, so I will be asking the question. Um, so can you briefly mention the main advantage of radar over let's say LIDAR or, or RGB camera and how can we measure the effectiveness of radar in let's say adverse weather conditions and you know uh, yes i mean that's exactly why each sensor is on advantage so it, it is a common belief that you cannot rely on a single sensor to do this job to detect human all are important and each has an advantage now regarding to the camera or other sensors visual base then lighting condition right you might be driving down the street there's no a bright light illuminating the street. They might have a fucking fog situation. They might have rain situations. And in those situations, your certainty using camera-based detection reduce. Okay, now in this case, radar would, be not, would not be affected by those conditions. Lighting, weather condition would not be affected. So you can use radar to give you additional information to assist the uh, detection. But the most important is we are not trying to say one sensor is better than the other. Eventually, it had to be do this, some sort of fusion. That would be the most reliable because we want to achieve 99.9 .9 better uh, detection rate so that we don't hit anybody, right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Chen, uh, for this excellent presentation. Uh, our 